Hey folks, Roland from Philly Cam here, and I wanted to do a brief look at some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts for Adobe Premiere Pro. Now this came out of another tutorial I did, which I'll link below, which is some of my favorite general tips and tricks for Premiere Pro. And in that video, I said one of my favorite things to do was to open up the keyboard shortcuts and look through and see what are some keyboard shortcuts that can really help you. Um, but when I started thinking about what my actual favorite keyboard shortcuts were, I realized that was going to have to be a separate video or the whole thing would have been half an hour long. So this is the breakout video for it. Check out that original video. Um, but anyway, let's jump right in. These are some of my top picks for keyboard shortcuts. Okay, for me, my top one is S for snapping. So if we zoom in on our little magnet here, so snapping is the natural magnetism that it applies to a clip. So if you start dragging and you get anywhere close to an edit, it'll lock in place. And you'll actually see those little white arrows signifying that it's snapping in place. Sometimes that's really useful. Sometimes you need to be a little more granular and that snapping is kind of jumping you to the wrong place. So you want to turn that magnet off and then you can drag uh, be, and be much more precise. Um, for me, using the S key, which is the default uh, to turn snapping on and off is great. And I've also worn down my S key over time. So that's one. The next one is the tilde key. Uh, the tilde key in Premiere is the default key that full screens whichever zone you're in. So if I need to look at my timeline, say like how I've done my audio and I want to expand it so I have a lot more room to work with, I can tilde that. If I want to full screen my video so I can check and see did I miss focus like I did in this one, I can tilde it and full screen it. When I'm organizing clips, I can full screen my project and now it's so much easier to drag clips up and down and relabel and recolor my clips. And then you just hit the tilde key again when you're done and it goes back to showing you all the windows. Tilde key, absolutely fantastic shortcut. The next one when we're working on our timeline here are the up and down arrows. And what they do is they jump you to the next edit point. And they do it based on, if we look over here, uh, which of these tracks is lit up. And this is also where you decide what um, files when you copy and paste, what track they land on. So you can turn these on and off to change uh, how you navigate through the timeline and how you copy and paste things. But basically, if I have this bottom track enabled, let's say I'm here, I start watching. Now I just want to skip to the next time I made a cut to check it. Uh, I just tab the arrow down and I go to the next cut. Let's say I want to go back. I hit the up arrow and I go back to the previous cut. Okay, uh, just a few more keyboard shortcuts to go over. If you use Shift D, that is the stock keyboard shortcut for apply default transition. And I use this particularly for audio transitions all the time. So if we're looking at my edit here, every time I made a cut, it's gonna make a little popping sound in the audio unless I put a transition in. So I can click right on the joint between these two edits here, I get this little red line. And then if I do Shift D, it's gonna put the default crossfade transition in. Now defaults to a second long, that's way too long. I can shrink it all the way down as short as it'll go to just two frames. You can also select that transition once you've made it the length you want and copy it. And if you go to the next junction point you need, you can highlight it and just hit paste. And then it pastes it at the length you need. So I use that all the time. You can see in my timeline edit here, I don't have a single cut between two pieces of audio that doesn't have some kind of audio transition to keep from those nasty little pops sounding. So those are some of my top keyboard shortcuts along with E for enable and those paste and remove attributes I mentioned earlier. So if you're only gonna focus on a couple of them, those are some great ones. C and V for the razor blade tool and the cursor slash arrow tool are also great to kind of throw in your repertoire. Um, but those are kind of some that I'd focus on if you wanna start getting into keyboard shortcuts. And again, don't worry about it if you don't. If you're a mouse person, just stick with that. It's cool. Okay, hope those were helpful. Uh, again, there's another video where we go over general Premiere Pro tips and tricks, so be sure to check that out in the description as well. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. We had to take a quick break because this guy decided this was a good scratching post and that was making for some great audio. Thanks, pal. How long are you gonna hang out with me while we do this? You wanna learn about color coding, Moscow? Oh yeah, you do, buddy. Okay, so. So you can actually see right in the timeline here, the different colors that I've got. 